thrilled to have you here in the sanctuary to worship Christ the Lord. If you would rise as you are able with the Christmas dialogue, you can find in your home. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. We have seen Christ's glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. For a child has been born to us, a son given for us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. And by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of our holy name. Amen. Beloved, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Please be seated. At this time, I invite you to the announcements in the back of your bulletin, and I have a few more. There's a coffee pot you may have noticed in the back. It's on hot water for tea and cocoa. There are cookies. With special thanks to my uh, our church office administrator and my wife for the delicious cookies to go with the morning drinks. So please stay up and worship and enjoy each other's home. I wanted to thank everyone who helped to decorate the sanctuary for this season. Those who helped um, hang the wreaths, put up the Christmas trees, and place them. Seconds. Special thanks also goes to the flower field for getting the point seconds for us to decorate the sanctuary building. We especially appreciate the gift of our point seven cross from Joe Tonto. Tonight, our ushers will pass the offering plate. That is something we have not done here in over two years. But it's important that we get to participate the work and call of the church, and passing the offering today is one way that we can do that. A few details. We have four ushers. There will be two on this side of the congregation and two on this side. When the usher comes to hand you the plate, if you would pass it to your neighbor and on down to the end of the pew, at which time the second usher will take it and pass it to the next row. It's been a while, so we'll get our way through this. I also wanted to draw your attention to envelopes at the end of each pew in case you need them. For communion tonight, a little bit of direction. We will be using pre-filled cups as we have been over the past two years. So beginning here in front, I will um, offer an invitation and you can file to the center row by row and just come forward for, uh, to receive both the bread and uh, the wine or grape juice. 
If you would like the grape juice, please ask. I will uh, provide that for you as well. Once you've received your cup, if you can return by the side aisles, um, you just have to kind of work your way in the front of the end. Uh, for silent night, one other uh, bit of direction. We will again have our ushers help you light your candles. I do hope that you receive a small candle in the end. Uh, the ushers will light on the end of each pew. When you light your candle, please bend the unlit candle towards the lit candle. That way it will um, protect us from having a hot wax So when the usher lights your candle, in order for uh, you to light your own candle, you know that the candle is bending towards the uh, I also wanted to draw your attention to the wonderful memorial flower book that we have in the arms. Please take one. Share them on the paperwork that you have uh, ordered a book set up in honor or in memory of. Or even if you have not, take them with you this week. I own the names. We are so grateful for the family of God here in this place. Offering uh, envelopes are in the walkway for 2023, so if you have given um, an offering of record here in this congregation, regularly there are envelopes. If you do not find your name, please uh, let me know or let one of the ushers know and we will be sure to get you a box. I think there are boxes on the floor, but I'm not sure if they're or not. But we will be sure to get you a box of envelopes if you like them. There is a box in the walkway for our food pantry. Our food pantry has been serving an average of 30 to 40 people a month. Some, some days more than others. We offer um, once a week for three hours on a Wednesday. We are also offering one night a week. Um, unfortunately, though, our provider is full of abundance and they have been experiencing shortage of supply chains, which I'm sure we have all heard. So Tara, the director, and myself came up with the thought that we can ask the congregation and friends to please participate in this important ministry <coughs> by providing shelf-stable goods. Peanut butter and jelly, crackers and snacks of all kinds are also needed in the big baskets. Um, Christmas morning, Matt wanted to be to remind you that he and I have recorded a Christmas collection this year, so before tomorrow morning, if you get onto Facebook, it will be made live at 9 a.m. and be available thereafter for the rest of the day and ongoing. So I invite you to, to um, join and do that. There's some, the bells play, and there's some good music there. And it's a great way to settle, um, take a moment of peace for your Christmas day. And uh, for the rest of your announcements, I invite you to take your bulletin at home, and uh, there's a prayer list there. You can use it in your prayers throughout the week. I invite your bells up for your
your heart and himself, a people of his own, for zealous for good deeds. Here is the second lesson.
is filled with heavenly hosts, lots of angels, singing for to God and praise and peace on earth. Good evening, beloved. Welcome to church. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself, I'm Julian Faith, 
No one is the most welcome. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, bestowing your gifts to a poor humanity. Affirm to us that no matter where our lives take us, the gifts that Jesus brings to us of grace and faith will always be for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. He said, here is the Lamb of God. One who is coming is greater than me. These were the words spoken by John the Baptist as he pointed to Jesus as the one who brings God's kingdom of salvation to us. Jesus was the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophetic words, words that were written some 700 years before Jesus was ever born. But in families in the area, laid on blankets and placed in a simple feeding room. One of my Advent devotions this year talked about the impact of faith and belief on our lives. I'm always looking for Jesus and how he shows up in our everyday lives. The writer talked about how in our best moments we believe that faith is enough to deal with the anxiety and suffering of life. And it's in those best moments, he writes, we believe that faith provides comfort, peace, and joy. I can see where it's wrong. Perhaps you can too. Even when life is at its worst, we can still see peace in the midst of sorrow. That's the best moment. But I couldn't help but wonder what happens in our worst moments. What happens when we just don't have the strength or the wherewithal to hold fast? What happens during all the other moments that we have? Perhaps in our worst moments, we lay aside our belief and step around it. Or, or maybe we actively toss it out the window. I don't know what happened to you. But in my own life, there have been many times I fought to lay aside my faith because of experiences of suffering and loss. Those were the times I needed someone to point the way, to remind me of the gift that Jesus brings when I can't seem to find a way forward. When I've lost the words to pray and to trust that anything will get there. John the Baptist and the shepherds in the fields, guarding their flocks, barnyards, they point the way for us. The shepherds were out in the fields, living and working in ordinary ways for their time. Though some scholars would disagree, I see the shepherds as what I would call average Joes, making a living doing what they could. Their lives were spent outside, and while the picture of stars and clear light might evoke an image of beauty and comfort, they didn't have gathered their sleeping bags and a little and little personal heaters when it got cold. Nor did they have hot showers at the end of the long, hard day. No matter what the season or weather, the shepherds kept watch over the flock. Now, the shepherds most likely didn't know exactly what was happening the night when the angels shared with them that the Savior was born. But Christmas came to them. Christ's birth and the salvation of the world was at hand. The shepherds were an integral part of the prophecy from Isaiah that Angelina read tonight. A child has been born to us, a son given to us. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the midst of a powerful Rome flexing its oppressive muscles, Jesus comes to bring peace and salvation. 
And it's the shepherds who point us to this peace that is Jesus. In today's world, in the midst of political and environmental uncertainty, abuses of power, and the fight for human, human rights, the shepherds point us once again to the peace that Jesus brings for us. Perhaps there is someone in your life who points the way to Jesus for you. Someone who points out that the gift of Jesus is always for us. Whether this Christmas Eve is or was our best day, our worst day, or somewhere in between, John the Baptist and the shepherds at work in the fields point the way of Christ. Beauty and ugliness, joy and suffering, they all leave their marks on us. As we grow, as we age, perhaps it is in our best moments that we recognize all of these things that render us human and the ones for whom Jesus came. Beloved, Christmas finds us. No matter where we are, Jesus comes for us in whatever the circumstances of our life are. Today, in this moment, the truth is, at our best days, our worst days, and all of the ones in between, are not defined by what happens to us. But rather, our best days and all our days are defined by what happens for us. May God bless you on this Christmas Eve.
among the nations. Let us pray to the Lord. For the spread of the joyful news that the Savior has come, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and those who find no room, let us pray to the Lord. For the renewal of the whole church in unity, let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord, bring us renewal to the church. For the light of Christmas to shine on all of us, let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord, bring us the light of your truth. Rejoicing in your birth and trusting in your mercy, O Christ, light of the world. We commend all of the new life. Amen. Would the ushers please come
Let us pray. Holy God, your beauty shines forth from the nation, and your love flows from the cross. As you gather around these signs of your love, come on us, arm us to extend your care among the hungry and all in need. In Jesus' name we pray. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, shed for all people and for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord loves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. He must this day our daily bread, and then forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and see.
Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Yes, with the ushers who uh, come forward, and the ushers will give each of you a light on the end of the fuse, and then you can light from one another.
close in us a war can as quiet in him. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. May the word that Mary brought to her carry you into a new and abundant life. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you in love and strength. May the word that the angels proclaim in song bring harmony to our world. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you.